All right, this is a continuation of the Jah is not from Jabalun. Our Jah, right? Let's let's make that clear. Our Jah, the the true Tobi Jah or the Tobi Yah, right? The good I am, the good really He be, the good who be who He be. You understand? His divine Majesty is not. Like these um, dissemblers here and slanderers on this uh, Torah Codes uh, 2012 page, right here, try to suggest or infer, right, or infer in this particular um, not article, article, you understand, that is on this particular site, right? And you can put the Rastafari Ja or Torah Codes 2012. And Rastafari, Ja or Jabulun, you know, and you hopefully will get this particular page. If we can uh, note this in the vid, we will. Now we was actually pointing out one um, summary note because we went over many of the other points already. So if you're seeing this part, I think this would be like the third one in this particular video series. And we give permission to our brothers and sisters who can download these, put them together, distribute them, circ circulate them. For an honest, you have them for an honest price in the, in the ministry of His Imperial Majesty. Please do so. You understand? One can give a tithe. You understand? In the due season or a portion, if one is in ministry, but go out there. You understand? We have to go out there and do the work of the King of Kings and His Christ and our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, what we're addressing here is 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 slandery. Slander, right, right here, Masonic reggae, because this brother happens to call himself John Mason, right, and surprise them. Well, they are going to be surprised, you understand? They're really going to be surprised, you understand, because of all the lies they are saying against Rastafari, you understand? And this is like the first step. The first step is to slander them, almost like the name calling, you understand, and say that we're something less than what we are. Because as you go further down here, you know what I'm saying, you'll see where they say right down here that um, Rastafari, right, Rastafari religion derived from this branch of Freemason. That's a lot. But see, what they try to do is at the top of this right up here, they try to cobble together certain pictures, right, and then write certain dubious um, um, captions up here saying Hala Selassie was a Freemason. Then they put a question mark here. You notice that? They put a question mark here. But the way the sentence is written, it's a declaratory. It's saying such and such, normally either a period or exclamation. But they're trying to put a question. They're trying to soft. It's what you call a soft kill. You know what I'm saying? This is a soft kill right here. But it's slander all the same. You know what I'm saying? And there's a tire and a Ethiopia mystery as per, as per, Psalm 87 that we originally dealt with and was addressing, and we might have to get into that a little bit more deeper in another part. But this section right here is mainly on um, rebuking, right? Rebuking the slander against Rastafari and to, you know, to warn I and I, brothers and sisters, about this dissembling that is going on. You understand? Because more and more they're recognizing, you understand? They're recognizing the truth, but they don't love the truth that they're seeing. You understand? Because they have not, you understand, a, a love of the truth. You understand? And they are falling from grace. Now, what we was pointing out right here in the Queen of Sheba, right, and her only son, Minulet, because we also address um, some other related, um, some other related points and some other related matter. Let's move this over. See if we can move this over a little bit. It's still not fully over, but let's get that first front and center. So what we, what, what, where we're at right now is the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, um, the Sir Wallace, Alfred, Budge, you know, he got a long name, but Budge, Budge's um, translation of the Queen of Sheba or the Kibbutz and the Guest that he calls the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, right? And now we have the book available as well as the Gutters. You know, so we have compared um, the different versions, and it is, Budges is, is, is one of the best out of the lot that's available right now. So we suggest those two side by side so you have um, the 
you know, the first hand, the primary source. You know what I mean? There's primary source, and now the translation would be at best secondary or maybe even tertiary source. So you can go to the primary source of it. All right? So that, that's at our books page, lojsociety.org, and you can go to the resource center, and there are um, free PDFs as well as um, the hard Bible and English Bible study software and Schofield Reference Bible as well. All right, so let's continue right here, or let's try to sum up on this. Hopefully this will be the third, the third part of this. And we're in the 100th chapter. We're on page roughly uh, 186. So we're in the 100th chapter of the Kubra uh, Nagesh, or the Kubra Nagesh, right? Nagesh, actually, right? Or Nagesh, as long as we say, something Nagash. But that's a poor translate, a poor pronunciation. Be that as it may, we all study and learning and growing. Iron sharp and iron. Oh, awo, awo. Amen and amen. Now, it says right here, now it's interesting what it said, right, because we had left off a little bit earlier when it says right here, when um, Hashem, Baruchu, blessed be he, the name, said, and now, why do you magnify yourselves over Adam? Why do they magnify themselves over the black man? You know, and, 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 you know why this white supremacy? It's the same thing. That's why we say that the white man has been deceived by the devil. You understand? The white man himself has... A lot of our ancestors were deceived by Satan also. Look at the Israelites. You know, and look at the Old Testament, the Queen of Heaven, and all this other kind of stuff that was going on. Satan, you say, Regamech. Um, to whom you understand all these things that was going on in, in past times you understand but but now we are seeing and now we've, we're coming to the end of that dispensation so the whole 2012 and everything else is really signifying you don't think we're in the 35th or uh, 36th year and counting you understand um, and I think that we're going to go to the 40th year you understand there will be a restoration of our divine monarchy you know, then there will be that restoration. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Lord of Adonai, will be established. If you check out the Freemasonic mumbo jumbo from Albert Pikey, right? Albert Pikey and others, right? And others out there, they basically tell you that they, that's why they hide these secrets. They say they worship Lucifer. Now, Lucifer has a connection with Tyre. That's all when we say over here. When we point to this particular picture right here, right, that she represents Tyre, he represents Ethiopia, right? And this Psalm 87, when we look at Psalm 87, and Psalm 87 is uh, very, very clear. Let's just look at Psalm 87 for a moment, because actually we just began just to deal with one particular subject matter. He over as we start to get into this, the Holy Spirit is just enlightening us to various aspects of this. So we highly encourage ones, and if ones want to download this and put this together, put it out, circulate it, distribute it, so you can buy more blanks and, and, you know, print more copies up, you know, start a Bible study. You know, we're saying among brothers and sisters who, who truly seek to do the will of God in Christ. But make sure you try every spirit to see whether they are of, you understand whether they are of God because a lot of falsies going on out there, right? So in Psalm 87, here's what it says. It says in verse 4, it says, I will make mention of Rahab. Now in Amharic, Rahab, Rahab means famine. But then if you go deep in this word, Rahab is the name of Tiamat. You know from the Babylonian, Tiamat the serpent and Marduk, you understand, who's like the Lord in that sense in the Babylonian mythology. He chopped up. Uh, um, 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 chopped up uh, um, um, Tiamat into two portions. You understand? One made the heaven, one made the earth. That's according to the Babylonian um, um, reverse engineering recession. You understand? Of the, of the truth. That's their telling of the story. And then we also have Rahab as Egypt. Now there's also Rahab, you understand, who is the harlot, you understand, in the Bible, who comes into the genealogy of. Um, uh, Geta, Geta Chin Yesus, Ad, Adonai, Adonai, Yeshua, Yehoshua, 
right? Or Old Testament name of Joshua, which is the Yeshua, Yeshua, so forth and so on. That's why you find Joshua even in the New Testament. It's really speaking about uh, Yeshua, Jesus, right? But it's interesting how that kind of sneaks past the translated senses in the King James Version of the Bible, right? 1611 we're speaking about. But it says here, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon, Babylon, which means confusion, the place where the Israelites were in captivity, where we get the round Hebrew going to the square Hebrew, you understand, and a lot of other creeping in occurs at that point, right? Um, and, and, and Babylon, right, to them that, what, that know me, behold Philistia and Tyre, right? Psalm 87, verse 4, and Tyre, right, with Ethiopia, and it says, this man was born there. Then it says, and of a Sion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. And it says, the Lord, or more correctly, Yahweh, uh, he who be who he be, his divine majesty shall count, he shall impute, Right when he writes up the people that this man was born there, Selah. Verse seven says, as well as the singers, as the players on instruments, instruments shall be there. All my springs are in thee. Now this is very well known amongst us as Rastafari, and it's chanted. You understand before the throne. You understand by I and I as Rastafari. So you can see how deep this land to go. You understand? I mean, we really should get on top of them about this and, and prove what you're saying. And once we disprove it, we should sue them. You understand? Sue them for these sort of things. I mean, you don't go around doing this to John's children. You understand? And we have to recognize what's going on here. So they're suggesting, right? It says Rastafari, it has been suggested that the Rastafari word for God, you know, it's very tricky language here, right? The word for God, Ja, comes from the term. Right? comes from the term Jabulan. It says Jabulan, Jabulan, spelled J-H-J-A, right, is a word which was used historically in some rituals of royal arch masonry. They should say European, right, Anglo-European royal arch masonry, because then it'll become clear. Then they go on and says, according to Francis X, King, it is also used in Ordo Templi Orientis, right, rituals, the leadership of Alistair, Alistair Crowley. Who wrote this? You understand? Of Alistair Crowley. We don't have nothing to do with Alistair Crowley. Fire butt. You understand? Know Rastafari, then they go on. Now, here's where the kicker comes in. If you notice, it's soft kill, soft kill, and now they go in for the juggler right here. They say that Rastafari, right, religion derived from this branch of Freemason. Fire bun. Fire bun. It's not Josh Freemason. You know, there's a difference between Freemason and Mason. Freemason is like, like Eminem hip hop. You understand? That's like Freemason. You know, then soup, soup, super rhymes and super sperm. That, that is the old, that's the real hip hop. You know, then, and there's the same difference that we have between the, the Ethiopian and, and Egyptian and beta, black, beta, Israel roots. Of the builders, and we already went through that, but just so that if you're tuning into this, let us pull this up right here, you understand, so we can show you this right over here, and it's very, very interesting, you understand, because when we go here, we actually get to find out that when you, when you study this word, right, and when you study this word um, for um, Mason, you understand, when we study this word for Mason, just to prove this, because people might not want to really understand it. Right, we go down here, Mason. Let's let's go to their usage, right? Right, their usage is, is right here. Notice, notice what happens right here, Mason. One time, according to authorized version, King James version translation, count a total of 272 times. Sometimes it means stones. Sometimes it means weight. Sometimes it means diverse weight. Sometimes it means hailstones. Sometimes it means stony. Sometimes it means carbuncle. Sometimes it, it's translated to mean hailstones. Hailstones. Headstone, right? Masons, plummet, sling stones, sling stones, right? Like David slew Goliath, right? But it's Evan. Now, what's interesting about the word Evan is that we have Evan in the Kubra uh, Negesh, right? The Kubra Negesh. 
right? Or the or the Queen of Sheba and only son Menelik, because Menelik's name is one of his names is Eben Hakim, right? That stone, right? That stone or what? That mason, the wise mason, who builds a sure foundation. You have been a sure foundation, that Davidic foundation, that Christ, Christos foundation. You understand that Yeshua, that black Messiah foundation. Now, let's click on the rest of the entry right here, right? As we click on the rest of the entry right here, right, okay, we went over a little bit. What happened right there? You understand? Maybe we have to go down here, right? Click on the rest of the entry. Oh, they don't want to give us this, right? They don't want to give us the, maybe it's too large. Maybe that's what they're trying to say. You always, but click on the rest of the entry. The main thing we want to point out, right? The main thing that we wanted to point out right here, right, the main thing is, is basically that Evan. So when we see that word Mason, go, not, don't go to this one right here. You know what I'm saying? But go to 68. You know what I'm saying? It's a context. It's one of those context kind of things. But we want to go to Tyre so we can kind of cut the chase, cut the chase. Hiram, right? There's the real Hiram, king of Tyre, and then there was Hiram, a beef, right? Hiram who ate the beef. Right? Um, that's why they have the beast eaters, right, at the tower, right? So Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon, for he had heard that they had anointed him king. You understand? The same way the British sent their people to Haile Selassie, because they had heard that they had anointed him king. It wasn't that Hiram anointed him king. You understand? It wasn't that the British anointed him king. You understand? But they heard that the, that the priesthood, the Ethiopian Levites, had anointed him king. Right? Um, in the room of his father. For Hiram was ever a lover of David. You understand? And we see kind of that love affair also when we look at um, some of the British for a moment. Right? And let's go up here. Right? Let's go up here for a moment. Right? So let's go to the top of this. So you see a little bit of this love affair. Right? This love affair right here. There's a love affair. But actually, here's the Holy Spirit is showing I and I. But actually... When we look at the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minyalik, right here, right? And we're in the 100th chapter. Let's back this up so one can see this, right? See what chapter we're in right here, right? Here we go right here, chapter 100, right around page 184. You see what it says right there? Concerning the angels who rebelled. Now, remember Jude, what Jude speaks about? Remember the... They didn't know nothing about the Ethi uh, uh, Hanok or Enoch until it was discovered in Ethiopia. You understand? And they keep discovering things. And at first they enjoy joy, but then it's like Satan snatches it out of their heart, right? Satan snatches it, snatches it from their hearts, right? So we're in this chapter right here, the 100th chapter concerning the angels who rebelled. That helps to give us more backstory on on Jews. You understand? On Jews. Right, and when you look at these pictures of Christ, you see uh, uh, the favors His imperial Majesty. Right, we can't flip that on the side right now for for you all. You understand? Or maybe we can, but um, let's just let's just go ahead right now. We'll we'll get into that as well. Right, and interesting what chapter it's it's in. You know, so let's check out all of that. Um, now. Let's go to the part that we were at, and this is where we're at right here, right? So, so God, or Jah, now remember, Jah doesn't come from um, as they want to lie and slander on us. Jah doesn't come from Jabulam. Where does Jah come from? Let us show them right here. Here's where Jah comes from. Actually, Rastafari, it's very well documented. You understand? It's very well documented. You see right here where Jah comes from? You know what I'm saying? Jah comes from Psalm, right? Psalm 68, verse 4. And it's the only time in the whole Bible which we have Jah in the Bible. So it's amazing how these people would lie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they lie, they lie worse than a bad rug. You understand? Um, or they're on some bad drug. You understand? They talk about us smoking marijuana. Maybe they need to smoke some marijuana. You know what I'm saying? Because they just keep lying. They can't keep their thoughts together. You know, over so here's where Jah comes from. Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing to God, not unto, not not to, unclean, undone, unkind, right? No. Sing to God, right? Sing praises to his name, 
ratifying praises to the Hashem, to Kedamawi Haila Shalasi, to Haila Shalasi first, the first power of the Trinity. Av one of Memphis Kedus, the first power is the power of the Av. That's what restored the kingdom to Israel, we the black people of the world. So to his name, extol him, that means lift him up, right, extol him that rideth upon the heavens. Now, if you look in the Hebrew, it says sometimes the desert, who rides to the desert. And that's connecting, in the older versions, connecting the, um, the Solomon had a son named David. David had a son named Solomon, and Solomon had a son named David, who renewed the kingdom of David in the highlands of Tobia, of Ethiopia. All right? All right. So it says that, extolling that right upon the heavens by his name, and it says, Yah, in the Hebrew, but here it says, Jah. Don't blame Rastafari, blame the Jesuits. You want to blame somebody? It's the Jesuits that invented or, or developed this J in the English language. We, we, we've seen this well documented, and you can look it up on the, on, on the Internet, uh, how the J comes into the English language, so forth and so on. And it says, rejoice, right, rejoice before him. Remember, this is the same psalm, right? This is the one and the same psalm, and let's just point this out because some people might be unbiblical, you understand, so they don't know this, but when they start to see this, that they really want to study and show themselves approved, you understand, to God as workmen that need not be ashamed. So here, here we go right here. In the same song, right, now we can point out the famine that took place in Ethiopia because of the rebelliousness, right, where it says, God set up the solitary, the Bahitawi, in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in the dry land. When they rebelled against his man, she's like, Burhana Salasi Bar Marley said, if they don't know John and his imperial palace in Ethiopia, and they suffer and death. You understand? I mean, that's just plain, that's just biblical. You understand? That's biblical. But this psalm right here is a very powerful, very powerful psalm, right? And Psalm, here we go, 6831. What does it say right here? It said, Princes shall come out of where? Egypt. We're, we're in what? A spiritual Egypt. Go to D.C., see the uncircumcised. Obelisk, the uncircumcised penis sticking up in the sky. You understand? Now you can go and worship uh, Martin Luther for King. You understand? Or the founding um, fat herds, fathers, right? But here's what the word says that princes shall come out of Egypt, the Mequanans, Kogibit ye wet alu, Echopia, Echochua, water, Egeziari, Herzergalit, that Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands to God. What does it say in the next verse? People forget this. Verse 32, sing to God. The very same thing, right? Sing to God. Ye kingdoms of the earth, 72 nations, bow to his imperial majesty. And we got some of the pictures, actually, too. You understand? So that, that tells you a whole lot right there. You understand? That means that they recognize those claims, but now they're in a state of apostasy. You understand? Now they think that the Ancient of Days is the old man. He's getting old, and they can play a conspiracy. No. You understand? No, they can't. Remember, they're the ones who are going to get fooled. John laugh at them in the heaven, Psalm 2, because he see their day is coming. You understand? That day, right? Oh, sing praises to Adonai. You understand? Sing praises to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Shuha Moshiach. Right? Selah. Selah. Because what does he ride upon? The heavens of heaven. It's all about Nibiru, right? It's all about planet X, the black planet. He rideth upon the heavens of heavens which were of old. Lo, he sent, he doth send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. You talk about, oh, he talk about Nibiru or something. The planet is making these sounds around the world. It's like a roar. Remember, Nibiru is coming from Regalis, and Regalis is the Leo constellation. You know what I'm saying? So that would be in the Hebraic, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Ascribe strength to God. His excellency is over Israel. His majesty is over Israel, the true beta Israel. His strength is in the clouds. Abe to O Father, I Father, O Father of the house, of the beta Rastafari and the true beta Israel. Thou art terrible, terrible out of thy holy places. El Elohe Israel, Baruchu, blessed be he, the God of Israel, is he that giveth strength and what power to his people. 
Blessed be God, Baruch Hu, Baruch Ha Elohim. Blessed be Him. So this psalm, you know, we're in the manifestation of this psalm right now. This is a very, very important psalm because it begins off in, in, in 68 and 1 to the chief musician, a psalm or a song, a mezmor, right, um, of uh, great King David. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, right, the root of David. Let's just take a look upon his beautiful face, the root of David. So we see Ethiopia. We see Tyre, we see Psalm 87. But it says, make mention those who know. You understand? There's a lot of folks who just don't know. They just don't know what they just don't know, right? John Mason says, surprise them. You understand? Surprise them, right? Because me and them are not friends. They're friend enemies. Here's what it says. It says, let, right, or really make. We say make because let can also mean prevent, like he who lets it. If you look in, it says he who hinder it. You see, the English language is very tricky right there. So we say words, sound, and power. This is what we have to know our roots. We have to study the roots of these things. Anyway, we say, Rastafari, words, sound, and power says, make, make God arise. Make Ha Elohim arise. Somebody says, resurrection. You understand? Somebody said, resurrection. They say, they say Rasta, Rastafari, your, your God is dead. Well, we say, make Jah arise. Right? The same they said of Yeshua, the son. So if they did it to the father of a son, they would do it to the father. Because the father and the son is one. Right? But it's now the father who has got off his throne to make all of his son's enemies his footstool. So remember it says that he is the only, right? He's the only one we want to touch on this is, is God of Bahitawi. Because if you look in um 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 John's Gospel, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 3. It says that so they may know you, the only true God, right? So they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christos, whom thou hast sent. It's very interesting when you look at it, right? We could bring up the Bahitawi picture, but maybe not right now. We've got a lot of things holding right here. But we have to just link this right here so... For, for my brothers and sisters, you understand, and for the children, the faithful children and the faithful Ethiopian, that they may be encouraged and they may contend earnestly for the true Hymenot. Here's what it says in the um, here's what it says in the in the in the Gutters, right? In the Gutters, right? In the Gutters, Mitra, Asara, the Asara uh, Sabbat, chapter 17. So that will be John's Gospel. In St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 3. So you can read it in the English. Here's what it says right here. It says, Wazati, yeiti, hiwet, leze alem keme, ya imaru, kiyake, le ahadu, zebe aman amlak. Bahi, bahi, titike, bahi, titike, where the Fenoco Jesus Christos or Christos. Now, if you read that, right, if you read that, right, in the English, right, if you read um, that in the English, let's turn our Bibles there so we can give you the exact English so somebody don't say, oh, well, there's a word that you miss here or there or you said this word like that. You understand? Let's give them this right here. Um, chapter 17, St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might what? Know, not be naive, not speculate, not suppose, not suggest. You know what I'm saying? That they might know thee, the only, the what? The only true God and Jesus Christos and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Now, that verse... Right, that verse in the good is, right, in the good is, let's just bring that up right here. That verse in the good is this verse. And the word that we was reading right here is by Hititeka, by Hititeka. So he's the Zebe Aman Amlak, by Hititeka, right? And where the Fenoko Jesus Christos, right? And that in the, that right there in the English, right, in the English, would be the only true God. 
You understand? Now, in Serak, it talks about the Bahitawi who wears the crown. Right? And we know what happened with Solomon. There was a demon, right? There was a demon, right, that sat on his throne for 40 days. Now, when we look at the revolution and the creeping coup, the Satanist conspiracy against our divine majesty, we see the very same thing going on, and we're in the 36th year and counting. And that means that the 40th year will come at a very, I mean, there are some heavenly signs that have already been charted, you understand, because the heavens is like a firm clockwork that is to come. So let's recognize that. Now, this particular psalm right here, it's actually, when you look in the Old Testament, is what it said when the Ark comes out. When the Ark of the Covenant comes out, this psalm is said, right? It says, make God arise, let his enemies be scattered, and let them that hate him flee before him, right? As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so make the wicked and the weak-hearted perish at the presence of Ha Shem of Ha Elohim Baruchu, but make the righteous be glad, L make them rejoice before Ha Shem. Yea, make them exceedingly rejoice. This will say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. But you try to weigh us down for all these lies and slanders and and demonic suggestions. Verse four it says, Sing to God, sing to Ha Elohim Baruchu. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rides upon the heavens by his name. What? Jah. So when they say that come from Jablon, them a liar from the pit of hell. You understand? And the word silent power drives them back there again. And rejoice before him. Because who is this? He's a father of the fatherless. They never had to send Ethiopian children abroad to be molested and adopted, and in some cases molested. Not in all cases, but in some cases the evidence has come forward. And murdered, and murdered, Miss Garner, and murdered. So it's the father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God said to the what kind in the family? The solitary. That's why you find maybe one Rastafari in the family. One by his tawi, in spirit and in truth in the family. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious, right, so the rebellious, they dwell in what kind of a land? A dry land. Abir to our father, O father, O father of the house, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, say la. That's the, like the musical interlude where they go to the bridge or they bring in the music and dub, right? That's way right fear. And then you come in again and it says, the earth shook. Chant. That, is that that earthquake that everyone talks about and that the, the book speaks about? He would shake it this once. The earth shook. The heavens also dropped. The heavens dropped. Chant. At the presence of Hashem, of Ha Elohim, when he revealeth himself. Could him say him dead? Right? But we know him live. That's why we rejoice exceedingly. But they're going to be in panic. Even Sina itself or herself <laughs> was moved at the presence of Ha Elohim. El Elohe Israel. Thou, Abitu, didst send a plentiful rain whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. How those waters came down and that rich topsoil from Ethiopia down into Egypt, you understand those plentiful rains? Thy congregation, thy machiver, thy, your society, the society of his imperial majesty, the line of Judah, have dwelt therein. Thou, Abitu, O Father, his Father, O Father of the house, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. So we have all this in the example of his imperial majesty. You understand? The Lord, Adoni, Gave the word. He gave the word. He gave the rhema word. The logos, the constant word that became flesh. He gave us the rhema word to use against all these satans and adversaries in true faith. Great was the company of those that publish it. So brothers and sisters, get out there and publish it. You understand? Kings of armies did flee apace. <laughs> and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. Though ye have lying among the pots 
yet shall ye be as the wings of a what? A dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When El Shaddai, the Almighty, scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Salmon, right? The hill of Ha Elohim is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Now, this speaks to these enemies prophetically. Why leap ye, ye high hills? Why did leap and why did jumping up, trying to jump above Jah? You understand? Ye high hills. This is the hill which Ha Elohim desired to dwell in. We speak about Addis Ababa. We speak about Ethiopia. We speak about Africa. Yay! And Gaziabi here, Lotus of Hot, the sustainer will dwell in it forever. You understand? The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. So they're looking around, seeing all these angels and all these. Uh, flying things, and you got all these liars telling you that all of them are demons. All of them are demons, even though it's the very same thing we have in the Old Testament with what Elisha, you understand, or Elijah, Elisha, the same kind of thing going on. You understand? But here, John Word, it says that the chariots, because the wheel, the circle, rotation of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels, right? Of Melach, you understand, or Melach. Right? Are thousands of angels. And it says, Adoni, the Lord, we're speaking about Yeshua, who, and Adoni is the enemy of the European so called Freemasons. And you know that. They hide that. They say they hate Adoni. Adoni is the bad one. You understand? That's our black Lord and Savior. You understand? Adoni is among them. You understand? As in Sina. You understand? In Sinai. So that's what was happening in Sinai. Right? In Sina. In the holy place. In the Kedus. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Spiritual gifts he's given I and I. Yea, for the rebellious also. Even the rebellious. That the Lord God, that Yahweh Elohim, Baruch Hu, might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord. Baruch, you understand, is Baruch Ata Adonai. Bless are you. Abitu, you understand, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, the God of Yeshua, you understand, Selah. He that is our God, not the God of the world, but our God is the God of salvation, the true and living Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ. And to God, well, Yahweh would be right there, who is the Adoni, the Lord, the Father and Son connection right there, the longest the issues from death. As I said, don't fear the one who can destroy your body. You understand? Because in Yeshua, he brings that forward. Don't worry about that. Just stay in the true and the living faith. But, but, God shall wound the head, Elohim Baruch Hu shall wound the head of his enemies. And the hairy scalp of such and one as goeth on, Still in his trespasses. You understand those those Decepticon and false brethren that want to sneak in amongst us. Adoni said, right? Adonai said, I will bring again from Bashan. I will bring my people again from the depths of the sea. That thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies and the tongue of thy dogs. You understand? In the same. Think about Joshua and Caleb or Shu. Right, or Shu and his dogs, right? They have seen thy goings, Abitu, even the goings of Amlakiye, of Elohai, Elohai, right? My king, you understand? I and I king in the Mechdes. The singers went before, you see how this links again with Psalm, Psalm 87? The singers went before, so they're trying to hit the singers, call it Masonic, right, guys? Right? Then you, you over, no, um, the singers went before our wool, and the players on instruments followed after. Among them were the damsels, the daughters, you understand, the daughters of Ethiopia, you understand, playing with timbrels or the kaburo, right, like Miriam, right? Bless, bless ye ha Elohim in the machiber or the machiberoch, 
in the congregations, in the societies of His Majesty. Even the Adoni from the fountain, from the Eyn or the Ain of Israel. There is little Benjamin, little Binya, right, or Jamaica, the Caribbean, Rastafari with their ruler, right? The princes of Judah, right, not Afro American, right? The princes of Judah with their council, EWF, Ethiopian World Federation, the princes of Zebulun, and the princes of Naphtali, and they're coming forward, right? Thy God, Ha Elohim, hath commanded thy strength. Strengthen our too. That which thou hast wrought in I and I. Don't you recognize how dread it is and how this psalm is a prayer? Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents to the eye. Rebuke the company of spearmen, all these gunmen, all these mercenaries running around, all these demon possessed folks. You understand, rebuke the company of the spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. They're going to have to give tribute, otherwise they're going to be done. Metaphysical powers. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. That's what we're saying right here, this war and rumors of war. Princes shall come out of Egypt, out of this spiritual Egypt. They shall come out of all this looking to D.C. and being dizzy. Right? Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands to the true and living God, to the King of Kings, Ha Elohim. Sing to Ha Elohim, ye kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to Adoni, to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because they don't. They won't be. They won't be among the kingdoms of this earth. You know what I'm saying? To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, oh, fear Nibiru, the black planet. The overstand, just get to the foundation, build your house on the rock, spiritually, ironically, you know, right? Because he rides upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, you know what I'm saying? Which was from old in time, from the Kedem, you know what I'm saying? The Kedemo, lo, look and see. He sendeth out his voice, and that a mighty voice, ascribe ye strength to Ha Elohim, his excellency. His imperial majesty is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. That's why they're spraying all that stuff up there, trying to do some, you know, some, some confused, bewildered demons, some of these same demons we're reading about in the Kibber and the Gets. You understand? Know Ave tu, O oh Father, I Father, O oh Father of the house, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel, El Elohai, Israel, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, is he that giveth strength and power to I and I, his people. Blessed be Jah, Baruch, 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 be Abba Kedus, Kedus, Abba Tachin, in the name of Gir Tachin, Namit, Hanatachin, Jesus Christos. So this psalm here, my brothers and sisters, I just just inspired us to go through the whole this whole song and to kind of annotate it as we um, as we went as we went along. But let's just put, point this out right here. We said that this is the Ark song. This is a song that opens the the the, the gate, the transporter, in a sense. You understand? Um, you're seeing Raiders or what's this Raiders of the Lost Ark and all of that stuff right there. And, and, and there's a little something there that is, that is true, you understand, about that. Um, let us go right here where, okay, we're still in this. We have to take out some of these, um, some of these uh, other, other words right here and see if it gives us the Old Testament. So you can see this in the Old Testament. It said, let's, um, uh, let, okay, let's take out, let's take out this right here. We're looking for actually numbers, right? We're looking for numbers. Something, something is, something is holding, something is holding that right there. Let's go to numbers. Let's go to numbers chapter chapter six, right? Numbers chapter six. You understand? You know, I think these these fallen beings. Because he already said that we have that power. Now this speaks about the Nazarite vow. That's what right we're of the Nazarite. But now let's go down right here, right? Let's go down right here. 
where it speaks about the the Ark of the Covenant. Is in this chapter right here, the Ark of the Covenant. Right, that's the blessing actually at the end right there, with the Ark of the Covenant. Um, 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 let's see, let, let, let's let's see if we can get that right here. Let the Ark. There we go, right there. Right. Okay, it's, it's worded a little differently in the King James here and there. You understand? But you see that right there. And it came to pass, right? And it came to pass when the ark set forward. When the ark set forward. You know what I'm saying? And every aggregation of I and I that is really found in ground on the on the rocks should have an ark, just like in Ethiopia. The oaks, and not the ceremonial one they have, but an actual one. But anyway, we'll touch on that. Yeah, willing, right? And it came to pass when the ark set forward. Forward, forward, forward ever. And Moses said, Rise up, Lord, rise up, Yahweh, he who be, who he be, our divine majesty, and let thine enemies be scattered, right? And let them that hate thee flee before thee, right? So when the ark was ready to move out, this, this, this I'm talking about the real ark, not the ceremonial ark. You know, there's the ceremonial arcs and there's real arcs. Even among I and I, Rastafari, and every society house in the society of his majesty and lines of society, you know, must investigate these matters, right? Verse 36 says, and when it rested, he's saying when it came to rest, he said, return, Abitu, to the many thousands of Israel. You might, you might have heard that phraseology, right? You might have heard that phraseology in the Bible before. So this is in chapter 10. So it is showing when the ark is moving forward, what is said, and when the ark comes to rest, what is said. Now notice how that links exactly with Psalm 68, right? How that's an exact um, link with Psalm 68, right? The thousands of, of Israel, maybe it doesn't say many thousands. Let's see what we have here, right? The many thousands of Israel. Um, we have a psalm here. Well, says the hundreds of thousands, but speaking about I and I numbers, right, the many thousands of Israel right here. Now, okay, we went on that particular point right here, and we had to touch on that. So take a note of this right here concerning the ark. When the ark sets forward, you understand, and when the ark comes to rest, right, the very same thing that we have right here in Psalm, um, in Psalm uh, 68, you're right? That's where we get Jah from. That's actually where Jah comes from in the Rastafari, the link in the Rastafari movement, right? Now, the Queen of Sheba, we were speaking on that, and what we wanted to just touch on before we close on this right here, um, remember it's about man has like ten thoughts, wise and the foolish, the five good, the five bad, so forth and so on. Then was asked these angels, right? And these are the same angels now working through um, these uh, these um, people who have sold their souls, you know, right, to Lucifer and Satan. And now, why do you magnify yourselves over Adam, black man, right? If ye were as he is, and I had created you of water and dust, ye would have been flesh and blood, and ye would have transgressed my commandment in the singular more than he hath done and denied my word. And what is the word? The word is the Logos, the constant word, that's Yeshua HaMoshiach. And the angel said to him, Praise be to thee, O Lord. Far be it from us. We will not transgress thy commandment, and we will not oppose thy word. I'm sure they said the same thing to his majesty, didn't they? For we are spiritual. We're not dealing with religion. We're dealing with spirituality. We're spiritual beings for life. And he is a creature of dust. He comes from that black, that reddish brown earth. You understand? Um, we are we are spiritual, but he is a creature of dust, doomed to folly. You know, like can anything good come from black people is what they look at, you know? Like we need them, you know, to to, to, to hold our hand and everything else. And now try us well, these fallen angels, rebellious angels said. Before they fell they were rebellious. You understand? And put us to the test so that thou mayest know whether we are able to keep thy, thy, thy word. You understand? I think this is what we find in this time right now, when he puts Jezebel, right, into, into a bed. You understand? He puts Elizabeth into a bed. 
right? He put, puts her into a bed for a certain time to see whether she would repent. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and John tells us that, and she did not repent. But now, it goes on to say in the 100th chapter of the Kippur and the Guest, and in Wallace Budd's translation, that's on page 186, and when they had vaunted themselves in this manner, Ha Elohim, the love of men or the love of humanity, said to them, If now ye go astray as far as this in transgressing my word, the wrong will be upon your own heads. You know how that connects to Psalm 68 right here. For Gehenna or Jehanam or hell, you understand, know and fire and sulfur and fervent heat and whirlwind shall be your habitation until the great day. That's why many look at these storms, they rebuke these storms in the name of Yeshua, because they recognize spiritually what's really in these storms, right? Until the, what great day? Ye shall be kept in chains, which can neither be loose nor broken forever. Now it goes on and says, but if ye truly, if you keep truly my word, right, the word of Yeshua, you understand the testimony of our Lord and Savior, and ye do my commandment, ye shall sit upon my right hand and upon my left. For everyone who hath conquered is mighty, and he who is conquered shall be overpowered. Now, Satan, it's a regimen, Yehun, hath no power. This is what we had left off before. Hath no power whatsoever. Now, a lot of folks think that God and the devil, you so-called, is equal. You understand? They don't understand the mystery. You understand? And it's like the Matrix movie, in a sense. They jack into your soul. You're the one who has life. You understand? You are the one that the true and living God created. But they jack into that through thoughts. And this is what the Kibbutz and the Gas amazingly explains right here. It says, Now Satan hath no power whatsoever, for he hath only what he maketh to what germinate in the mind. You remember the parable of Christ? Um, the tears, the tears and the wheat. You know what I'm saying? And then from the first parable, the parable of the sower, the word, and when one doesn't understand that word, Satan snatches that. He cannot, Satan, it's a regime yuhun. He cannot, they, yes, was crystal sin, it's a regime yuhun. He cannot grasp firmly. He cannot perform anything. He cannot beat. He cannot drag. He cannot see. He cannot fight. But people say, well, well, well but, 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 but the devil, you know, but, but that's what they see. That's what they think they see. No, they have people who have been jacked in by Satan. You understand? Satan has jacked into them through the word. You understand? Through dropping in thoughts. It says right here, he can only make what thoughts to germinate silently in the mind. You understand? Silently. So you see people just acting buck wild and crazy. You know, you know, you see them thinking, what's, what you thinking? What's up? Um, you know, they're going some kind of crazy stuff there, right? So he can only make thoughts to do what? Notice the word germinate. That's a key word there. And him who is caught by the what? What kind of mind? By the evil mind. He prepareth, right? Who prepares? Satan prepares for destruction. You understand? Satan don't love the people that worship him. That's why a lot of the Satan's on the big delusion. They think Satan loves them. You said Satan view all of them, the white people, the black people, the Asian people, all under the Adamic curse. You know what I'm saying? That Adam, a damn Adam, the goddamn Adam. That's, that's how they view the devils don't love man. So people be going around doing worship and, and, and sacrificing and everything else. And, and Satan and the angels and the devil is preparing them for destruction. But they don't even know it because they, they, they don't have a love of the truth. You understand? And they don't receive I and I report. You understand? And if a man have conquered, but, right? If a man conquers the evil mind, there he findeth grace. You see the grace. Remember, the devil fell from what? From grace. You understand? And hath a reward which is eternal, everlasting, ever living, ever sure. And to you, according to what ye wish. So here, Ha Elohim, the Father, Hashem is saying to these angels who rebelled that we read about very briefly in Jude, in the New Testament, he says to them, according as you wish. That's why they say, do what thou wilt will be all of the law. That's why they say that, that law of the lama, you understand? So, but really the Father said to them first, you understand, according to what you wish, there shall be upon you what? 
the mind of a man and the body of a man. But what kind of man? Mankind, right? But, right, but take good heed to yourselves that you transgress not my word. You understand? Not Yeshua. Don't transgress that word. You understand? That constant word, you know, that logos, and break not my commandment. And defile not ye yourselves with eating and drinking. Oh, that's all they've been doing, right? Fornication and fornication. Or with any other thing whatsoever. And transgress ye not my word. So the Duke of Gloucester, that's why he didn't, he, he, he didn't accept that. You know, he was, he, was, he was persuaded. He was convicted. You understand? And it says right here that in straight way they were given to them, you understand, with his word. With it, remember, it says all things was created through, through him, to him, and, and to him. So through the Son, through the Word. You understand? The, to, through his Word was given to them flesh and blood and a heart, and the heart of the children of men. And they were content to leave the height of heaven, and they came down to earth, to the folly of the dancing of the children of Cain, of Cain. With all their work of the artisans, like today is like what they call Labor Day, the real Labor Day. You understand? The real Labor Day is like going on today, right? The same kind of thing, Juve, Jobbling Morning. You understand? That is, there's your Jobbling, right? But they were content, right? They were content to leave the height of heaven and, to, and they came down to earth to the folly of the dancing of the children of Cain, of Cain, of Cain. With all their work of the artisan, which they had made in the folly of their fornication, and to the sing their singings, and which they which they accompanied with the tambourines and the flutes and the pipes and much shouting and the loud cries of joy and noisy songs. So here's your Illuminati in the music industry. You know what I'm saying? There's the root of it. And their daughters were there, and they enjoyed the orgies without shame. For they sent it themselves to the men who pleased them. You know, they're always be coming out with some scent. Everybody's coming out with some kind of scent, right? And they sent themselves, right? And they lost the balance in their minds. That's what they have sense that call like, oh, obsession, you know, and all these kind of, to make you lose the balance. Look, look what it says. The balance in where? Their minds. You know this? That's why they be trying to say, oh, this is legend. No, this just rah, 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 rah. They don't want you to see it. Because they think that if you read it, you might actually, you know, over saying, recognize, you might conquer that evil mind. And they don't want that. You know what I'm saying? So they, they keep you under this suggestive kind of mess. Right? And the men did not restrain themselves for a moment, but they took to wife from among the women those whom they had chosen and committed sin with them. For God, Ha Elohim Baruchu, blessed be he, hath no resting place in the hearts of the arrogant. Right? And those who revile. See how they speak about his majesty? They're arrogant. They revile him. They revile black people. You understand? Know but he abideth. Notice in the notice here, at least when they said he and they speak of God, it's always capital H. They don't even do this in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? But he abideth, he dwelleth in the hearts. Right? Where? In the hearts of the humble. Right? Let me just show you this right here because the spirit wants me to just put this in here within the time that we have, right? Explain this mystery right here, right? Notice this right here. This is Tiferet. This is Tiferet. But here's the hidden Sifferot, right? It's called Da'at. But actually, the heart. You know why they keep that off of there? Why they keep that? It's a cross, really. It's a crossroad. It's a heart. You understand? Because it says, let Christ dwell in your heart. Let him reign in your heart. That's where that crucifixion process in man goes through. And then he wins a keter, right? He wins a keter. He wins a crown. You know what I'm saying? And notice the crown of his match, that woolly hair, which is for that purity, that purity of mind. You know what I'm saying? That purity of heart. That's why they keep the art, right? They keep the art, which is knowledge. They call it knowledge. They keep that off of there. Now, the ebon, right? The ebon of the mason is here, is the bina. That's where it comes from, bina, to build. You understand? To build. You understand the opposite side over here is Hokma, is wisdom. You understand, and the Keter is the crown, and here Tiferet 
is beauty. Now, when you look that up in the Bible for where that word underlies the Hebrew, it's very profound, very interesting. And we just point you there because we probably won't have enough time right here to go through it. So here's the reason why we, you know, we're, we want to point this, make this connection right here as well. You understand? This is the crossroads. You understand? That's the heart. They have it a little higher up here. It's really supposed to be, they have it kind of truncated. You understand? Now, they have it here, but really it's supposed to be, it's, it's really here. You understand? That's where Christ rules. He rules in the hearts of those who receive. And that's why it says he knock at that door. He knock at that door. That's why it says begin with the knowledge of the Son of God. You understand? That knowledge of the Son of God brings us to unity. You understand? That's our community is based on that knowledge of the Son of God. Because then we don't have to say to one, see, here is God or there is God or whatever like that. But everyone will know him, you know, when they are born again. So this is interesting, the connection right here, because as he abideth in the hearts of who? The two who time, the humble, and those who are sincere, uh, who are, who are, your wise, your internet, straightforward, right? And it says, and he spake in the gospel, the Wengel, the good news, right, saying, woe be to those who make themselves righteous, who make themselves self-righteous, right? who make themselves righteous, self-righteous, and despise their neighbor, despise their neighbor, their bread companion. I thought we had the mess over a little bit earlier, right? And again, he saith, God loveth the humble, and he holdeth, holdeth lightly those who, what, magnify themselves. And what does it say? And straightway, Ha Elohim was wroth with them, and he bound them in the terror of Sheol. Until the what? Day of redemption. Ah. So the millennia, the millennia, right? What's with really the millennia? That thousand year reign. You know what I'm saying? We're in a different dispensation right now, but a lot of people, they have a lot of people um, misdirected because they have not studied and showed this um, for themselves. Move down as I read this. It says, As the apostle saith, as the apostle saith, the Hawaria, he treated his. Right? He treats his angels with severity. Right? He treats his messengers with severity. And it's interesting when you look at the Kabbalistic tree. One side is the mercy side or the goodness side, and one side is the severity side. Hawadi of Alos, he speaks about that as well. I think in the, what was it, the 8th, uh, no, the 11th, the 11th chapter, in the 11th chapter of Romans, right? It says, he spareth them not, but made them to dwell in a what? A state of judgment. That's why they, you know, they're, they're so afraid. A perpetual state of judgment. And they were fettered until the great day. Right? Now, the word of God, the word of God, the word of Ha Elohim, or Jah, if you please, conquered, who had fashioned Adam, Adam, in his likeness or form. You see? And those who had reviled and made a laughing stock of Adam, were conquered. Like when we say that Yeshua is black, they laugh. They think it's a joke. You understand? They think we're lying about it. You understand? They mock it. You understand? But really, you understand? They are the ones who are mocking Adam. Remember, Christ is the second Adam. So let's understand that, right? And it says right here that they're going to be con They've already been conquered, right? But, but, but still there's that grace period because we have to grow up. We as the children. And the daughters of Cain, Cain, with whom the angels had uh, company uh, conceived, but they were unable to bring forth their children, and they died. Now, here's where we get the Caesarean, the Caesarean, or the C-section, right, originally, right, in the earlier times, right? That, not to say why all the women have it now, but this is some crazy, horrible stuff right here, so you might want your children to go out the room right here, because it's, and the children who were in the womb, some died. And some came forth, having split open the bellies of their mothers. My gosh. They came forth by their navels. And when they were grown up, they reached man's estate. They became giants or very tall, you understand, know very tall beings. And they're finding a lot of these things now, these, these, these uh, carcasses and bones and other things, mummified partially somewhat whose height reached to the clouds. 
and for their sakes, and the sakes of the chatiatenyot, the sinners, the wrath, the ma'at of Egeziyavi, ma'at, it became quiet. And he said, my spirit shall only rest on them for 120 years, and I will destroy them with the waters of the flood. Them and all sinners who have not believed, accepted as true the word of God, the word of Ha Elohim Baruch Hu. And those who believed or admitted or amen the word of their fathers, even our holy patriarch of the Ritua Haimeno, the Tuahedo Beta Christian and the Aviata Christiana in the community of, 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 of we as Ethiopian Hebrews and Ethiopian Christians, and did his will, the key thing, and did his will. No injury came from the waters of the flood. But he delivered them, saying, If thou believest, admit to say amen to my word, the logos, to Yeshua, thou canst save thyself from the flood. And Noah said, O Lord, I I father his father, O father of the house, I admit thy word. Make me to know by what means I can be saved. And Ha Elohim said to him, Thou canst be saved from the water by wood. By that wood. Interesting. By the wood. When the wood is a tree, you over said, Well, here's going to explain the Ethiopic Talmud. You're going to break it, you know, explain, build it up for you. And Noah said, How are you to? And Exiavir said to him, Make thyself a four sided ark and build it with the work of the carpenter, and make for it three stories inside, and go into it with all thy house. And Noch, he admitted, he amained the word of Egeziavihir, and made the ark, and was saved. Now hearken ye to I, and I will explain to you concerning this thing. When Ha Elohim gave the command, he could have given to Noah a wing like the eagle and transported him to the country of the living. That hold, hold right there. That reminds me of uh, of uh, Revelation chapter 12 when speaking about that woman speaking about um, 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 Ethiopia, holy Ethiopia. Aren't you like the children of Ethiopia and the Tamil children of Israel, Amos 9 and 7, right? But then look at Amos 9 and 11. And it's very interesting. So it said that he could have given him like a wing like the eagle, and transported him to the country of the Hiawan, of the living, with, right, with, um, with all his house, until his anger, the ma'at, with the chatiatenyos, the sinners, the misses of the mark, the ones who did not have that mark. You understand? Did not have the mark, the Tao of Christ, right? Who had not admitted the word of God, and the word of their fathers had abated, or he could have lifted him up into the air, or he could have commanded the waters of the flood, which was like a wall, not to approach one mountain, where he would make Noah to dwell with his sons and not to submerge the beasts and the cattle, which he wanted. But know ye this, Ha Elohim was well pleased by means of wood, right? which had been sanctified, made holy, right? The salvation of his creation should take place. That is to say, the ark, the tabot, and the wood of the meskel, of the cross. Remember, we connected the tau, Ezekiel, I think it's chapter, chapter 9, right? Right, the wood with the cross. Now, Ha Elohim said to Noah, Make that whereby thou shalt be saved, that is to say, the tabernacle of the church, the Beta Christian, the house of the anointed one, the Meshahawiyah, the Messiahite, I and I, right? And when he said to him, make it foresighted, right, he showed that the sign of the cross was fourfold, as well as the Tav, the Tav, right? Now the four corners of the ark are the horns of the altar. And he commanded Moses to make the ark out of indestructible wood. Now, remember the first part of Mason, the first one we clicked on? 
on the Masons when you when you check out the the, the strong concordance, it had linked with the side like a wall, and it's all about the sides of the ark. And then the second word is the ebon, the stone, right? So anyway, let's go forward. So where were we? Um, um, the four. Uh, okay, he said, right, out of indestructible wood. Did I really go there, right there? Um, okay, now the four corners of the ark are the horns of the altar. And he commanded Moses to make the ark out of indestructible wood, or like some say the ebony, acacia, wood, right? And you know, the wood also is a sign of the humanity of Christ. He understand that blackness, that Ethiopian complexion. He said, I will sanctify thee by that heavenly and spiritual work of my hand, of my yard, right? And do thou sanctify thyself from filth, and impurity, and fornication, and vindictiveness, and falsehood, together with thy brother and thy house. This is what we got to do right now, brothers and sisters. And it says, sacrifice to me a clean, sacrifice of cleanness, and I will accept thee after thou hast sanctified thyself and thy house. So for us, in the Adis Kidan, in the Buddha Chadasha, is actually the, the sacrifice of praise. Right, that we offer the calves of our lips. Right, command all the people to sanctify themselves for my holy things must be offered by Kedusan or holy ones. And this thou shalt seek the tabernacle of my covenant, which I have created for my praise. And if ye come with purity of heart, no.